Hello F11 members and welcome back to part 2 of the Fundamentals of Post-Production Video Tutorials for issue 76, that's May 2018. So what I'd like to talk to you about today is the issue of highlight and shadow recovery because uh, whilst I was uh, doing some judging the other week, certain common faults kept popping up in pictures that are uh, that we were assessing. Images that were in essence great pictures but ruined by over-the-top or inappropriate post-production. Last month I talked to you about the issue of clarity and over-sharpening. So the other thing that was really noticeable was the issue of in particular highlight recovery. So let's look at this picture as an example here shot in Cartagena. Uh, and let's just try and get a handle on what just what is possible to recover from your highlights. So uh, here's the picture, and I'm going to reset it to how it came in uh, straight out of the camera. And I knew when I was exposing this picture that I would have problems with contrast. So essentially what I did was expose for my shadows here uh, and let highlights clip. Now looking at this picture, what are my options? If I just come back into library mode here, you can see that in, in fact I, expo I did exposures ranging from overexposure to underexposure to try and uh, give myself options for exposure merging subsequently because obviously the image is shot with my foreground in shadow and the tower in the background in bright sunlight. The trouble is, of course, that I've got things moving in the frame as well. Leaves framing the subject and people in the square as well. So it's quite a tricky lighting situation. Now the thing is, we have this ability within Lightroom to recover highlights. As you can see now, because I've got this box clicked at the top of my histogram, it's going to show me where I'm clipping my highlights and you can see there they are quite radically uh, a lot of highlights clipping now if I just grab the highlight slider and move it back Lightroom indicates to me that I've recovered those highlights the red start stop screaming at me uh, and just in terms of what the what the highlight alert tool is telling me, I've now recovered those highlights. But that's not actually the same as putting detail back into those areas, detail that is burnt out in the first place. I've dialed in minus 37 on my highlights recovery. If I carry on with my highlight recovery, it's just darkening down these areas up here that have burnt out it's not putting that detail back in. There comes a point where you can to go any further is just totally counterproductive. In this particular case I've gone to minus 37 or 6 uh, before I start seeing those highlights disappearing. Now the thing is I could carry on more but all I'm doing then is putting false tone into these areas. It's really, it looks horrible, I have to say. When you look at pictures where highlights have been tried to recover and all you get is this false grey tone in a burnt out highlight. So be aware there's a limit to what can be done and you cannot trust totally just the histogram alert here. You have to go visually with what you're seeing on the screen here. If I come back here you can see the difference between, if I go back into library mode here, between the t tower there and the detail that I should be seeing here. So clearly in this particular instance, uh, I really did have to resort to exposure merging to, to deal with that contrast. Let's look at another example here now. And I want to take you down and look at a similar situation just put in the actual number I want up here, 5524, to find the particular image. Here it is. 
Uh, if I go full screen, this is the image as I as I as I've processed it. Similar situation there. The light's dropping a bit. There's just soft light on the church tower in the background, which has dropped out of focus. Uh, it's dusk, so the lights are starting to come on in the streets here. But I'm still down in sh shadow here, whilst up top the uh, the church tower is getting that last, very last sunlight of the day. So still quite a tricky highlight situation. This is the image as I've chosen to post-produce it. This is the finished image. And if I come down here now uh, and we look at the before and after, you'll see what I've managed to pull out from the picture. So let's look again at the highlights, in particular what can and cannot be done with highlights. So I'm going to go back into loop, loop view and I'm going to go in back to how the image was imported initially. And because I've got my highlights alert switched on here, you can see that highlight screaming at me up there. That's clipping. Um, up here, there's detail, but it's very bright. I want to boost my shadows here, and I want to pull back my highlights. But the big question is just how far can I go? So technically, the first thing I want to do is, is just look at those highlights and recover them. And if I come back again to about minus 30, the highlight alert starts start uh, telling me that I've pulled them, uh, that I have recovered those highlights. Come back a bit further and it darkens down that whole top of the image quite nicely. Come back all the way and it puts some, it's amazing what it can recover from very bright areas. But again, here, in this area where I've clipped burnt out highlights, all it's doing is actually putting in a false mid-tone, which looks fairly uh, unappealing. Just out of interest, though, I'm going to pull highlights back all the way to minus 100, and now I want to boost my shadows as well, and but I'm going to go all the way to maximum on my shadows. Now, just looking at that picture, it looks pretty horrible, doesn't it? It looks almost HDR-ish, looks completely unnatural range of tones there. Uh, it is impressive what I'm able to manage to pull out from the shadows there, but clearly I want far more subtlety to this image. And with highlight and shadow recovery, what's important is to maintain that believability to the picture. It has to look natural. So with this particular case, you know, on my shadows, I'm going to come. There's nothing wrong with, with dark tones. There's beauty in a black. Obviously, I want some detail here in this bottom right-hand corner. But these statues of this Je Jesuit missionary called San Pedro Clava uh, is dark, and it needs to look dark to look natural. So in this particular case, I'm going to go with around about plus 40 on the shadows, just a little bit more. I use highlight the number and then use your keys, up and down keys on the keyboard to just fine tune the shadows, recovery there, uh, plus 40 there. And on my highlights, I'm going to come back to uh, round about there, maybe minus 70. I find the thing is, I don't want to go too far because if I start putting that horrid greyish tone into burnt out areas like that, it just looks unnatural. So that, in essence, has done quite a bit to recover that picture. Uh, and uh, again, in terms of shadow and highlight recovery, it's always a subjective call. Let's now look at another example here. Uh, Okay, so I'm going to go back into library mode, hit G on my keyboard to get to grid, display mode, put the file number in I'm looking for, 5538, and it's this night shot of Cartagena. Uh, and uh, let's go into develop module now, look at the picture, and I'll show you before and after. Again, on the left we have the picture as shot, on the right the finished article. 
and as you can see I've pulled back the detail in the sky, recovered some highlights, um, kept a fairly high key look to this picture. Just going to hit tab on the keyboard now just to show you full frame, full screen, the before and after. Um, with night shots, generally speaking, what you tend to do is wait for the sky to get much darker than this normally. But actually, in this case, I really liked the fairly high key feel to this picture. I liked the fact I can see distinctive figures down here in the Plaza de la Paz. Uh, and uh, there's a sort of golden feel to, to the lighting and the pinkiness left in the sky that I quite uh, that I liked very much that I wanted to hold on to. Now with night shots, what's there's always going to be burnt out highlights. You know, here on the left, you can see the image as it came in straight off the memory card. I'm clipping highlights there in where there are lights. That's inevitable. It would be it would be ludicrous to believe that we could have, hold on to the highlights in those bright lights and in fact if we did so it would look to my eyes anyways completely natural you can see here in the tower i'm also clipping highlights there so let's just go back into uh, loop mode and hit tab again to get my panels back and uh, just go in library mode back to how i how the image came in import and work through the post-production on this, bearing in mind just what um, we can recover from our highlights uh, and how far we can go. So first thing I'm going to look at this picture is, as, as I would do normally, I often start with my black point. And uh, so I hold down the Alt key and move my black slider to the left until I start to clip shadows. And where the yellow appears is just indicating that that's happening. So a little bit of adjustment on the blacks. So I find them very, very sensitive, these sliders. It's often easier to uh, use your keyboard. But I want to go minus 15 here. Uh, minus 16, OK. Um, now let's look at these highlights. OK, so my histogram is telling me I'm clipping a few highlights. Can I recover them? Well, if I move my slider to the left, until the alert goes off up here and the red blinkies disappear. I've pulled back those highlights. Um, now, I have to be careful I don't go too far because, again, if you go too far, you start putting that, that horrid mid-tone into burnt-out highlights. It just looks ridiculous. Um, I'm going to go to just hold down my alt slider here. I'm not concerned with the with the highlights where there are lights. I'm just concerned with the highlights in this tower up the top there. So minus 51. Could go maybe a little bit more. Just come down. I'm going to go to 50. Minus 60 on my highlight recovery now. Okay, but the sky is too bright. But instead of recovering that, pulling that back with my highlight control, I'm going to use the grad tool. So here I go. I hold down my alt key and pull in the grad from the top. That keeps the grad level, except it didn't that time. Let's do it again. Get rid of that. Hold down alt. Oh, it's not working for me today, but that's technology for you. It's having one of its moments. Uh, and uh, just adjust my grad there. So I want to darken down pretty much the top half of the picture with a very, very soft gradation here. Uh, and uh, pull back my exposure there. I find I, I use the grad tool a lot. Uh, it's a really, really useful tool. Okay, sorry about that beeping in the background. We've got a bit of road rage going on here in Melbourne Port, clearly. Uh, click, click, click on done. I'm not, but I'm not done because I'm using, going to use another grad here. I often do this, use a 
couple of grads just to get where I want to be oh, with this. And uh, just put a touch of tone into the top of the sky there. Okay, can you see that? It's just holding the image in without being too visible. I think it's a bit too heavy, that. Uh, I always feel with filters, whether you're using the grad filter in Lightroom or filters on the camera, that if you can see the, their effect, then you've gone too far. So I'm going minus 65 on that. Done. Just going to fine tune the other grad here. Just pull the exposure back on that a bit. Done. And that's uh, pretty much that image. I'm happy with that. And in particular, the highlights. I've pulled them back where they need to be pulled back, but not gone too far. So just to reiterate, uh, it's very easy to over-recover highlights and shadows, and it looks absolutely horrible in the end product, particularly when an image is printed. So I hope that's useful, um, and uh, we'll carry on with our post-production techniques next month. Please do send in your suggestions for what you'd like to see. Thank you.